with the Miles Garrett situation, and it's very fluid. Uh, earlier today, um, Adam Schefter reported that Miles Garrett, now for those that don't know or might not know the name, Miles Garrett is the player on the Browns that ripped the helmet off of Mason Rudolph, the quarterback of the Steelers, uh, on the Thursday night football game and smashed him over the head with his own helmet. Um, so Garrett's defense in appealing the indefinite suspension was that Mason Rudolph um, used a racial epithet or slur at him, and that angered him. Well, right before we came on the air, uh, it was announced by the NFL that Miles Garrett's suspension is upheld. Marquise Pouncey, who um, defended his own quarterback of the Steelers, he had his suspension reduced from three games to two games. So there's two ways you could look at this. The NFL heard what Garrett had to say. Let's say they believe him. They still don't think it excuses his actions. Or they don't believe him. Now, I think that this is one of these things. There's microphones everywhere. There's lip readers everywhere. When did he say it? Did he say it when... when um, he was on the bottom of the pile with the helmet on. There's no way anybody would be able to hear it. Did he say it when the helmet was off? I've looked at that video over and over. It doesn't look as if he's saying a racial epithet. Again, I'm no expert lip reader. But the bottom line is that is quite an inflammatory defense. And the NFL said they, they have not articulated whether they believe him or not. But by saying well, that the suspension is upheld, either they believe him and it doesn't matter, or they don't believe him, and it's still indefinite. Well, if they believe him and it doesn't matter, then there's going to have to be another investigation into whether it was said or not, because that would still be suspendable. Right. So the NFL, I would think, would have to announce they're going to investigate Rudolph to see if he said it. That's a great point. So if they haven't done that yet, then you have to kind of lean towards they just didn't believe him, that there's no evidence. Now, the Cleveland Browns are not talking. Um, there, are, there, there is some reports that this was something that they saw coming that he was going to say that to the NFL, but nobody has gone on record. Sheldon Richardson wouldn't go on record. Uh, Kitchens wouldn't go on record to say that um, Miles Garrett told him or them anything prior to talking to the NFL. So unless somebody on the field can, can back him up, I don't know where you go from it. The, the, the surrounding players were all Steelers, so are they going to sell out their own teammate? I don't know. And why would Marquise Pouncey defend him like that? I don't know. Does he look at it as, I'm just defending my teammate, that's the most important thing overall? Did he just happen not to hear it? You know, so uh, it, it just, I'm trying to wrap my mind around why he would wait a week. Well, a Steelers spokesman, Burt Lawton, said in a statement, Mason vehemently denies the report of being accused of using a racial slur during the incident Thursday night in Cleveland. He will not discuss this accusation any further, and his focus remains on preparation for Sunday's game against the Bengals. Now, yesterday, Rudolph told reporters he didn't say anything to provoke Garrett or escalate the situation. Um, here's Garrett postgame, because we, we talked about just, just now uh, in the soft open, where if this was the word that was used or what inflamed um, Garrett so much, why wouldn't he have said something right after the game to defend himself? And here is... Uh, Miles Garrett answering post-game last Thursday, a week from tonight, a week uh, from tonight, a week ago tonight, he was asked directly, did Rudolph say something? Did Mason say something? Is that what started things? I just got a good look at him. No, I'm not going to like comment on it. No. So what does that mean? Let me hear that again. Did Mason say something? Is that what started things? I just got a good look at him. No, I'm not going to comment on it. you got to go look at it. I'm not going to comment on it. When's that from? Right after the game. You just you just have to go look at it. I'm not going to comment. So he didn't completely eliminate. Uh -huh. Don't you love when a story that you were talking about on the radio we think is closed book, and then you find out? It's not. Hold on a second. I don't know. That's interesting. Now, I didn't remember that at all. No, I didn't remember it either. Here's Victor Cruz on NFL Live today, and he said that no matter what Garrett heard or Rudolph said he's still wrong I still think regardless of what was said to you or regardless of you know what, what said racial slur was said you still have to conduct yourself in a way that is conducive to others and not you know swinging a helmet 
isn't the way you combat that, right? It, swinging a helmet in the heat of the battle isn't the way you combat someone giving you a racial slur in that moment. Now, how I can see where he would take it to that measure, I can understand that. But is it the right thing to do? No. Here's Marcus Spears um, on NFL Live, and he said, hey, Garrett, better not be lying. If this isn't true, um, and Miles Garrett is using this to somehow, in some way, um, lessen his penalty or m make himself publicly look well, then he should be suspended for more games. Um, because when you make accusations like that, obviously there has to be due diligence done and you open up a whole other can of worms. Well, if, if they're saying he better not be lying, and then Mason Rudolph saying he's not saying it, he didn't say it, and there's no proof, well, the only thing that was accomplished is that you have made people think that Mason Rudolph might have said it. There's no proof that he didn't, and there's no proof that he did. But once you're accused of something, unless there's a total exoneration, there's always going to be that stain of the accusation. So that's where this gets really, really messy right now. And that would be a shame if he didn't say it, because that will be a stigma that will stick with him for the rest of his career. And the people that choose to believe it will believe it. The people that choose to not believe it will not believe it. But mm. there'll always be that air of, he said something. So you like to see there be proof either way. And I do think that if there's proof he said it, that he needs to be disciplined, right? Oh, I mean, absolutely. obviously, there are rules against it. It's a penalty on the field if it's ever said, and it can come with some uh, discipline from the league. And considering that it basically would have incited a riot, you, you could certainly make the case that he should get the same, if not more, than what Garrett got. Because that whole thing would then have happened because of the word that was said. Right? Pouncey stomping on Garrett, Garrett swinging his helmet at Rudolph. The embarrassment that the league felt would have all then stemmed from that word being said. It's interesting. I, I, I googled this and saw that there was a little controversy five or six days ago about Justina Anderson posting a tweet implying that that could have been what happened that she then deleted. Right. That then a lot of right-leaning pundits jumped on and tried to throw in her face for deleting this tweet. But it is interesting. You wonder, you know, maybe that was hearsay and something, but maybe it was something that was being said around the time of the game. And Justina is locked in into the NFL. Pete, well, her, players her, tell her stuff. Her deleted tweet was. Um, simply, I would bet Miles Garrett will say he heard Mason Rudolph call him something egregious. Never seen Garrett act like that ever. Not everybody just, says that, but then his Steeler teammates uh, of Rudolph say that's not the Mason Rudolph we know. He would never, he's never ever said anything like that in our locker room. So who knows what happens in the heat of battle? Because, you know, in the old days, the things that were said, I mean, Greg Buttle tells us stories. The things that were said and the things that were done. Wow, well, it's a different time now. Yeah. I mean, there is literally a penalty. It's a 15-yard penalty for saying that on the field. So well, uh, we're in a different world now. I'm sure that things were said years ago, maybe even like 10, 15 years ago. But it's not tolerated now. now there